Please let's take our seats, Asante and Sana. Let me, on behalf of the government and people of Kenya, take this opportunity, first and foremost, to welcome our friends, um, the Director General of the World Food Program, uh, the coalition partners from uh, the different countries, um, friends and uh, leaders who've come from different parts of the world to join us on this very important school meals coalition um, that we are celebrating here today and with the intention of looking at how can we make this better, how can we make this school feeding program um, serve many more Kenyans and many more children across the world. And therefore, on behalf of the government of Kenya, I want to welcome all of you to Kenya. We have already been welcomed to Nairobi by the governor of Nairobi. We are privileged to hold this second ministerial meeting of the School Meat, uh, Meals Coalition Task Force in partnership with the World Food Program. And it is an honor to host you, our esteemed visitors and partners, in the noble mission of building a better tomorrow for our children. We all know that our children are a blessing to us as parents and to us as a nation and humanity. We can never think about tomorrow without thinking about our children. And therefore, when we sit around a table, when we sit in a meeting like this to discuss our children, it is sacred. And it is the right thing to do. And it's emotional when we are discussing about feeding our children, especially those who would otherwise not have an opportunity to have a meal. And therefore, all over the world, children spend or ought to spend 75% of their time at school. And under ideal conditions, that would be the case. And they should receive at least half of their daily meals. It has been our long-held aspiration to maximize school enrollment and retention to ensure every child in Kenya has access to education. Recognizing that access to food and nutrition is a significant factor in keeping children in school, Kenya introduced the school meals program as early as 1966, when I was born, just three years after our independence. That's how long we have a history with school feeding program. It is the one thing that I insisted that must be in the manifesto of Kenya Kwanzaa. Because we still have too many children out of school and it is the reason why I specifically asked the governor of Nairobi that we cannot have the capital city of Kenya with too many children out of school, largely because of two things, infrastructure in our schools, and secondly, hunger. And I am very proud of what Nairobi County is doing and what collectively as a government we are doing in this space to keep our children in school and to make sure that to the extent possible, they have a meal. We have wonderful people. We have amazing people like Wawera. <laughs> this little girl, allow me to say that, you know, is an amazing human being. She has provided the infrastructure for Nairobi County and others to serve meals, hot meals, to children, not in the city of Nairobi alone, but in many parts of Kenya. Congratulations. There are people who work in the shoes of saints. 
Initially, the program was implemented only in Nairobi. However, the entry of the World Food Program transformed us and expanded scale nationally. The outcome has been inspiring. It is undeniable that Kenya has recorded exemplary rates of enrollment, retention, and academic performance throughout the duration of this program since 1980, when World Food Program came into this space. In implementing the school feeding program, we have remained dynamic and innovative and always on the lookout for strategies to enhance the program's reach and also the program's impact. In 2009, we adopted a sustainable and homegrown model, which relies on locally sourced nutritious foods. And by 2018, the program was fully integrated as a national initiative now benefiting 2.6 million learners, more than tenfold increase from the initial 240 when this program started. The program's transformative impact extends beyond education, stimulating value chains within our agriculture and food systems and boosting our economy. School meals, therefore, have a far-reaching benefits. They make adequate nutrition accessible, foster learning, create jobs, promote sustainability, and also uplift uh, communities. Yet, hunger remains a significant challenge to the well-being of many, particularly in arid and semi-arid areas and also in our informal settlements. To address this, we have tripled the budgetary allocation for school feeding and set a clear goal to expand the program's coverage from 2.6 million kids to 10 million children by 2030. Towards this end, we launched an operational plan to scale up the program early this month. We are committed to action and fully determined to succeed. Kenya is also addressing climate change or climate challenges by combining initiatives that promote resilience, including robust support for school meals, provision of local sourcing, and fostering sustainable practices such as clean cooking and the adoption of drought-resistant crops. Through advocacy under the call to action climate-friendly school feeding, we are embracing eco-friendly solutions. As we do this, we realize that achieving universal coverage requires partnership on a scale that is broader than what we have. Simply put, universal coverage demands global collaboration to leverage our shared capacities. This is why Kenya joined the coalition in 2021 and we want all our partners to unite under the National School Meals Program to achieve this ambition as we do it collectively and as we do it together. The Global School Meals Coalition brings together governments, multilateral organizations like the World Food Program, and philanthropies like the Rockefeller Foundation and Novo Nordisk. Together, we are rebuilding programs post-pandemic, reaching undeserved areas and improving efficiency. We welcome more agencies to come on board and make their contribution to a platform with the widest global reach. And I say this to not just global institutions and multilateral uh, agencies, but to also local private sector, Kenyan um, um, uh, civil society groups and others. The coalition has given me an honor of working with leaders like President Lula of Brazil and Emmanuel Macron of France, together with Alex from Finland. These are great leaders whom I appreciate what they do, and I extend my gratitude to them and commend them in particular, and especially Brazil's G20-led Global Alliance Against Hunger and Poverty. Kenya calls on other nations to join in this shared quest to ensure no child is left behind. Let me also say this, that it is not possible for us to discuss school feeding in isolation. As part of making sure that all our children have access to food, we have scaled up as a government 
our agricultural intervention to provide and supply more food in Kenya so that we are not just addressing issues about our children, we are addressing issues about the people of Kenya. It is the reason why we have done three things in our agriculture. Number one, we have gone back to supply subsidized fertilizer to our farmers, and I'm very proud of what the farmers are doing in Kenya. It is the reason why the staple food in the last two years has come down by half. What was being sold for 230 shillings is now being sold for 100 shillings. Number two, we are expanding our land under irrigation because we realize that with climate change, a much more predictable food system must be um, on irrigation. We have 700,000 acres under irrigation at the moment. By 2027, 20, uh, we want to increase that to by another 500,000 acres to 1.3 million acres. And by 2032, we want to take it to 1.8 million acres to make sure that we sustainably can feed not just our population, but also our children. And thirdly, we are also making sure that we provide offtake for our farmers so that we can encourage them to do more and to make sure that we are moving in that direction. And apart from feeding our children, two other things are very important for our children, education and health. It is the reason why we have now expanded under the Universal Health Coverage Program what was EduAFIA, which was meant for secondary school children. Under universal health coverage, we have now expanded that program to include not just children in secondary schools, but all children in primary schools and all children above the age of five. That way, all our children have access to insurance to make sure that their health is taken care of. And number three, on education, because we want all our children in school. I will be meeting the County of Nairobi members of parliament and leadership to discuss education in Nairobi because we have provided a billion shillings to do a thousand classrooms. Our intention is to provide another 5,000 classrooms in Nairobi County because we want all our children in class. There are, there are still many of our children in informal schools. And the informal schools, although they, they, are, they are great initiative, but they do not have the kind of infrastructure that will equalize the fortunes of all our children. We want all our children to learn in the best environment uh, that is possible. It is also the reason why in the last two years, we've hired 56,000 teachers more. And next January, we are hiring another 20,000 teachers so that every child in our schools have access to a teacher and they can learn. It is also a moment that even as we move into grade nine, we've not only finalized the process of building an extra 11,000 classrooms as government, I've also asked our members of parliament using their constituency development fund to also build another 6,000 classrooms so that next year we are ready to make sure that every child that grows to grade nine have a classroom, they have a teacher, and I am very happy to announce that we have already made all the learning material available. There will be a book, every subject for every learner to make sure that our transition is complete and our transition is effective. So as we discuss school feeding program, 
We're discussing the health of our children, and we are discussing the education of our children. Because as I said, our children are a blessing to us as families, as parents, and as a nation. And as we look after them, we ensure our future. It is the insurance that we have for our future. I salute our partners, including the World Food Program, World Bank, Global Partnership for Education, and the governments of the United States, France, Germany, and China for their steadfast commitment. With this unwavering support, we are better positioned to pay, we are better positioned to pave the way to a future where every child is nourished, empowered, and equipped to grow, succeed, and be the best that they can ever be. And we give a chance to every child, as was said earlier by the earlier speakers. So let me say thank you very much for coming for this uh, meeting. It is a meeting that is emotional for me. It is it's a very important meeting because we are not just discussing the present. We are also influencing the future and how that future uh, comes out. And I want to ask all of us to um, um, provide whatever support that we, we need, make the necessary um, contributions in ideas, in innovations, and in, uh, in, in whatever support we can to be able to make sure that we all succeed. Thank you very much, Cindy, and your team for finding time to come all the way to Kenya. You are a great partner to our country, and uh, this coalition speaks to the heart of what we believe in as a country. Thank you very much, and God bless you. Thank you, Your Excellency. If you may, we'll request that you just remain on stage. There's a gift presentation that is to be made by the Executive Director for World Food Program, Madam Mi uh, Miss uh, Cindy McCain, and she would like to present to you this particular picture, which Your Excellency is a drawing that was out of a school competition. This has been done by a 13-year-old child, and it is a gift in appreciation to your support to the school feeding programs. A round of applause for that wonderful, thoughtful gift presented to His Excellency. With your permission, Your Excellency, I'll request that we now proceed through there to where we're going to be taking a picture, a family photo, and we'll conclude with the national anthem while we're out there. As briefed earlier, kindly, the rest of us who are participating in the picture, ministers uh, who are present and ambassadors, please let's proceed. The rest of us, kindly, let's hold our positions and we'll stay in that position until we are directed which way to go where we'll wind up with the national anthem. We'll take a quick family photo, then from there we'll proceed. 